Hello and welcome to the second video in the onboarding video series to the Eclipse Data Space Connector. So I'm assuming you have already checked out the code, so this time we will be talking about the directory structure and how the code is generally organized. So let's just list it here. You don't have to do this in terminal. Of course, you can use whatever you want. So it's just to show you what's in there. And for everything else, we will be using the Visual Studio. Visual Studio code to be precise. As you can see, um, there is a few uh, directories in there. Um, so most notable, most important, let's begin with the SPI directory. So SPI stands for Service Provider Interface. Um, so basically that contains all the extension points to the data space connector. Whenever you want to add functionality or you want to modify or change something, um, you have to do this by implementing interfaces in the SPI package. It also contains stuff like um, model classes, like for example, um, it contains the data flow controller and the data flow initiate response. We will hear about this in more detail later. Or it contains the transfer process store, or it contains um, yeah, uh, various interfaces that you can implement and customize to your liking. So that's the SPI. The next one I want to talk about is the core package. So core basically contains, as the name suggests, everything that is very essential to the data space connector. It contains stuff that um, without, without which a connector cannot run. For example, it contains um, the, entire, the entire bootstrapping mechanism. It contains a default logger, the monitor as we, as we call them. Um, it contains um, protocol classes, uh, sorry, it contains uh, policy classes, it contains a web, uh, a web server, which is in the protocol web subdirectory. It contains a few other stuff, default implementations, essential core components without which a connector cannot run. Then it contains um, data protocols. The data protocols at this point only contains the IDS implementation. Um, we will talk about in a later video what role IDS has and what it does and what it is. So the implementation for that is in the data protocols. So basically the way we envisioned it is that data protocols contains stuff that is used for connector to connector communication like IDS a more general component. So if you, want it, if you want your connector to be reachable via, say, MQTT, that would not go there. That would go into an extension. But data protocols, um, that's for a system-wide communication schema. Then we have um, extensions. And extensions, that's actually the meat um, of a connector. So an extension is everything that adds functionality. Like, for example, you want to do storage in an Azure Cosmos DB, that's going into an extension. And in this case, that would be extensions, Azure, um, for example, the Cosmos storage. Or you want to store something in an, S, in an S3 bucket, then you have extensions, AWS, S3. Um, so stuff that adds a technology or a functionality to the connector, that's an extension. And basically what an extension is, it, it consists of at least two things. It can consist of a plugin file and, it can, and, and of the extension implementer. Let's check out one of the more simpler ones. Say we take a look at the transfer store memory. That means we need a plugin file, which is in the resources folder. It has to be in metainf and it has to be in services. And that file must be named exactly like the interface. And it contains just one string. And that's the fully, fully qualified class name of the implementing class. We will talk about this in more detail in the next or the or a later video when we talk about the service loader mechanism. That's basically a Java standard feature. And then you need this class, the in-memory transfer process extension. 
and memory transfer process extension. That's an extension, and an extension is basically implementing the service extension interface, and then it adds a bunch of things. Um, in most cases, it'll, it will do its work in the initialize method. It will, you know, register services, initialize some other backend service, what have you. That's what uh, an extension is. So all the extensions that you want that go into the extension subdirectory. So if you were to say create a configuration extension based on Postgres, that goes into extensions slash Postgres. The next directory that we that I want to talk about is the samples directory, and that contains, like the name suggests, code samples. And it focuses more on use cases, like for example, um, let's take uh, creating a public REST API for your connector. That would be a feature rather than rather than a technology. Therefore, it would go into samples. Or if you were to, uh, if you wanted to show how to um, interact with a connector in a command line environment, that would go in there. So samples should focus on use cases rather than technologies or features. Then we have scripts that contains Terraform scripts uh, that we use internally to deploy the connectors to, um, for example, an Azure environment. So you can, of course, take a look at it. You can run it. Um, that's fine. That's just our deployment directory. And then we have common. Common contains stuff like help, helper classes, utilities, um, test fixtures, stuff like that, that basically there isn't a place anywhere else in the repository that goes into common. 